The story of our town starts 19 years ago at a city council meeting, jam-packed because the enormity of the decision. Interstate 17, the Jackrabbit Highway, was approaching Pincushion, California at a quarter of a mile a day. At issue was a choice, have the highway go straight through town, so they see all the businesses, or route it around the outskirts and make the traffic choose to enter the town. A business loop. The meeting was noisy because the town was insecure. Was there a reason to stop in Pincushion, California, other than for gas and a caramel bar? If we built the loop where you actually had to exit, would people go the extra three quarters of a mile? Because if they don't, then this town is going to dry up. The trucks will stop, and only the ones we want to. The rest will go by and won't have to hear them or breathe the fumes. Those trucks are loud. Yeah, they're loud. That's the sound of money. You can use that money to buy earplugs and blackout curtains, and you can sleep at night. You ever tried to fall asleep when you're unemployed? What if we built the loop and the trucks don't stop? They will stop. We have these bright colored lampshades that we're going to put over all the streets lamps, like Hershey's Pennsylvania. You really think that's gonna work? I know it is. Raise your hand for the business, loop. It was one of those decisions that you know right away is wrong, but nobody wants to say it. Like, when you make the walls the wrong color, or you married the wrong woman. 21,000 people held their breath or said that it didn't matter when the Hallmark store closed down or when? That little market closed? You know the Korean one on Avenue L? 19,000 people pretended everything was fine when Reggie's Diner shut down and Abuelita's fine Mexican cuisine? 16,000. Lens Crafters, The Home Depot. 13,000. There goes the Dolls Automotive and Massage Envy. But we got two new bars. Goodbye, Fish Taco Taco. 11,000. Beautiful You. 10,000. Walmart. 6,100. The Denny's Cup. But we got three new liquor stores. At which point, the town council made the second great mistake. Those damn billboards. Welcome to Pincushion, California. Population 786. <laughs> Welcome to Pincushion, California. Population 791. She hates me. Lisa Finch Fox does not hate you. Yes, she does. Why would a guidance counselor decide for no reason to hate one single student? I don't know. Were you jumping on and off your desk? You had to be there. Bark, just answer the question. But you weren't there. You didn't see it. I am so pissed at you. Yeah? Would you be as pissed if you knew I'd gotten the lead in the school play? You did not either. Yeah, I did. The lead? Yep. Oh, Bark! I know. That's fantastic. What's the play? It's called Our Town. That's so wonderful. When did you find out? Yesterday. Uh, why didn't you tell us? I saved it till I was in trouble. Well, it worked. I'm so proud of you. Bark? Yeah. Yeah, doing okay? Yeah. Who are you talking to? Nobody. Well, you're talking to nobody kind of loud. Sorry. Were you talking to your mom? You were listening? Not on purpose. I just want to check in about tomorrow. You're sure you're ready to go back? Yeah. Maybe you should wait and get used to being home through the weekend? No, I got to go tomorrow. There's a tryout. A tryout for what? A play. No, it's too much, Bark. Let's ease you back in. It'll keep my mind off stuff. Those plays are late nights. I'll come home right after rehearsal. Next time, bud. It might not be a next time. They've been saying that for 10 years. But this is such a good play. It's called Our Town. It's all about the people in this town, and it's got a horror element to it. This already sounds like a repeat of the Dracula disaster. It's not. I'm for sure going to get a part. You don't know that. I'm probably gonna get a lead. There's a character named George, and there's one named the stage manager, and I just have a good feeling about this one. Next time, bud, stay home with me tomorrow. No. I have to ask out a couple girls. Uh.
couple? What is this practice? Well then, tomorrow it is. Get yourself ready for bed. Did you hear that? Hear what? That sound. That, that like sonar sound. I didn't hear anything. There. I don't hear it. Are you still hearing it? No. I know it's a long shot, but I've got to at least try, you know? I'm not even applying to colleges. I'm just gonna do the whole conservatory thing because I kind of think it's good not to have a backup plan. And after that, move to Los Angeles and start auditioning. I've been saving up, so I'll have some money when I get there. I have a request. Go for it. I've always liked the 17. It doesn't matter if it's two in the morning, that line of trucks is always coming up and down. Well, careful. You scared of heights? I guess I am. We're at three and a half weeks. I know. My request is kind of about that. What's the request? I want to touch your heart. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A habit, I guess. Self-conscious about the teeth. My mom took this antibiotic when she was pregnant with me and these three got all shriveled. The town didn't used to look so dingy. The craft store had these special covers they put on all the lamps to make them different colors. Where'd they go? Same place all the stores went. Which was where? You don't know? Oh, it's crazy famous. So tell me, tell it good enough and I'll let you touch my heart. Okay, a uh, pincushion was dying and the community board had to do something. They decided on this thing that had worked in other parts of the country. It's billboards. You put like 100 billboards along the highway, 80 miles to pincushion, worth the stop. And the reason to stop was the famous fried chicken. Anyone who lives in a truck stop town knows we have the best fried chicken because you don't actually want it all fresh and hot. The secret to great fried chicken is to have it sit in a warmer for hours. The meat gets all crusty and it pulls away from the skin and it's so good. How's the heart situation? Keep going. So Pincushion invests all its money in these billboards, both directions. Holy chicken, only 60 miles to go. But then someone does a focus group. It turns out sitting there for hours doesn't test well and meat pulled away from the skin is even worse. The thing is though, the billboards were already up. The money had been spent. There was just only enough money left over to buy some bushes and use them to hide a patrol car. Right past a billboard that said, you're almost there. We had a speed trap. Oh. But it worked. They couldn't write tickets fast enough. That is until three months in. The front page of the Huffington Post, the meanest town in the world, that was us. <laughs> and it killed us. Some people left because they were mad, and some people left because they were embarrassed. You guys are the first people to move here in seven years. All those empty houses. Yeah. So, can I? You guys gotta move. No. You're in the exact spot I need. Find another spot. No, you gotta move. Why? I'm taking a picture of Venus. It's for a projection of our town. Well, take it from over there. It's the first speech in the play. The morning star always gets wonderful bright the minute before it has to go, doesn't it? Have we met? I know who you are. Aspen. And you are? My card. S. Chloe Gander. You're seriously not going to move? Chloe, open your eyes. We're having a romantic moment here. Shh, shh, shh. He's not. Go, 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 go away. You're an ass. Did you just make fun of someone who stutters? No. Are you sure? I've known her since sixth grade. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm supposed to ask you, what's your favorite herb? 
my favorite herb. Yeah, the options are uh, basil, dill, uh, rosemary, sage, or decline to state. <laughs> Why? It's for Jessica. She's doing this whole taxonomy thing. Sage. Thanks. So, can I touch your heart? I need to go slow. No problem. Sorry. No, I'm glad you said something. But you can touch it. Oh. Wow. Feel it beating? Yeah. Something went wrong in the womb. My organs are in the wrong place. Amazing. Not really. My ribs are still up here. So my heart's not well protected. Not what you were hoping <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know something I like about you? What? Your teeth. And I was so happy I couldn't fall asleep. At all? Uh-uh. Go slow. She said the same thing. Good! Don't declare your love or anything. I'm not an idiot. So? What? What do you think of her? I haven't spent enough time. Yes, you have. What are you pretending you don't want to say? <laughs> I like everything about Aspen, except Aspen. That's snarky. No, you know what? I'm just... Honestly, I'm jealous. I haven't seen you for three weeks. You're seeing me right now. For five minutes before an audition. Oh, her favorite herb is sage, by the way. Are you serious? Why would I make that up? Here's one for you, and one for you. Uh, Maybelline, I like that retro cap. <laughs> Thanks. One for you. You know what to do with it, right? I do. Hey, hey. What's up, Devin? You ready for this? Hope so. Prokofiak's in a terrible mood. The Dairy Queen closed. It did? Oh. What are you so happy about? Do me a favor. Distract Prokofiak. After the audition, I'm gonna stay here and rehearse something. What are you gonna rehearse? Can't tell you. Would you stop playing that? Why? Play something livelier. I don't play piano, I play Claire de Lune. Learn something else. Oh, I don't have time. I have soccer and a little brother, and I'm learning to teach English as a second language. Welcome! You have entered a sacred space. These walls vibrate with the words of Shakespeare and Moliere, Escalese and Miller, O'Neill and Hellman. Listen, shh. Can you hear them? First up, we have Cole. Oh, uh, yes. What makes you write for George? George finds the love of his life when he's only 16. Do you need to have experienced something in order to show it to us on stage? No, but it helps. George also experiences heartbreak. Do you have any experience with that? No. So how would you get yourself into the mindset of someone who's lost somebody they loved? I haven't felt it, but I've caused it. Number six, Devin. <laughs> Goodbye, Grover's Corners. Mama and Papa, goodbye to Black's Chicken and Mama's Sunflowers. Devin, what are you doing? I'm just really happy at the moment, and I'm bringing myself to the character of Emily. Stop doing that. What's happening in the play at this moment? Emily is saying goodbye. To what? Where is this scene taking place? Um, Fortunately for you, auditions aren't graded. Number nine, Chloe. You're auditioning to be the stage manager. Why? 
She's confident and she controls the world. When there's any sort of problem, she takes charge. You're typecasting yourself. Did you want, consider auditioning for Emily? No. Emily's like Eeyore. She mopes around that cemetery looking at how beautiful life is. Really? You didn't notice that when you were still alive? Bye-bye. Grover's Corner has just got rid of one whiny little miss. Number 12. Jessica. Yes. Why do you want to be in this play? Because theater helps us to be human. You have the best grades in the school. I hope it's not because you're skating along on that kind of cliche. Playing other people teaches us empathy. I hadn't been in a play in 20 years. Would I be more human if I had? Maybe. And finally, number 23, Bark Mellon. Yes? Bark, I need to address what happened when you didn't get cast in Dracula. Yes? You were sobbing so hard, I was worried for you. It didn't last long. What do you like about our town? <laughs> it, it's, it's our town. <laughs> no, it's our town. It's one of the scariest plays ever written. It's not scary. The whole third act is zombies. They're not zombies. Who are you auditioning for today? I, I want to play George. Do you have a scene partner? No. A lot of times when I work with other people, they don't say it exactly the way I want them to, and it throws me off. I'm going to do both parts. <laughs> no. You have to have a scene partner. But I have the whole thing memorized exactly the way I want it. Is there anyone free who can read with Bark? Hello? Do we have any girls still back there? I can read again. The one we want is named Devin. Thank you, Aspen. Have you met Bark? No, we haven't. Nice to meet you. Shouldn't we follow Devin? No, she'll come back here. Are you all right, Bark? Yeah. Uh, whenever you're ready. Okay. <clears throat> Can I carry your books for you, Emily? Why, hi. It isn't far. He can hear us. No, I made sure of it. But did you lose your place? Yeah. That happens. Start over. Okay. Can I carry your books for you, Emily? Why, hi. It isn't far. How do you know for sure that Devin is going back? Ah! Bark! Where are you going? Dad! Dad! What's the matter, buddy? What's going on? I heard voices. Like, in your head voices? Yeah. When? This afternoon, this girl came in and the voices came in with her. Did they sound like people you knew? They didn't sound like people. Let's get you back to Rosemead. No! Not for long, I bet. I don't hear them now. It was only when you saw that girl? What was her name? Aspen. Hello? Kruffer, thanks for coming here. No. <clears throat> Kruffer, hey, uh, I got your note. It made me so, so, so happy. So I wanted to say thank you. So just sit there and listen, okay? I rehearsed this. I even rehearsed saying that I rehearsed this. Um, Maybelline handed out these giant paper hearts. They're gonna be performance art. We'll unfold them all on top of the hill. She'll take a video and hopefully the video will go viral and the town will get famous again, but this time in a good way. Um, you could put the name of anything you loved on the heart. You could put your cat or God or your folks, but <laughs> this is my heart. And as you can see, it has your name on it. I hope that that's okay. Every time I see you, I get this little jump. Like, I just scored a ring toss. Who are you talking to? 
Sorry. Oh, uh, I didn't think anyone was here. I'm kind of sort of practicing asking someone out with one of your hearts. How cute. Thanks. Who is it? Krooper, of course. Oh. What? I just saw Krooper holding hands with Ellen. You did? Yeah. Krooper sent me this note. Does it have your name on it? No, but it was in my locker. Isn't your locker next to Ellen's? Uh, yeah, it is. Krooper doesn't love you. Uh, it must have gotten in there by mistake. I feel bad mentioning this. When I saw Krooper and Ellen, they were talking about you. And they were laughing. Ha ha ha. Everyone's laughing at you. This is my heart. And you're all alone. She's in the hospital. What's wrong with her? They don't know. They found her unconscious. You're kidding. It's some kind of coma. Can we visit? Not till they figure out what's going on. Oh, I want to part, I want to part, I want to part, I want to part, I want to part. Oh, yes! You ready to look at the cast list? Yeah. Fingers crossed I get Emily or the stage manager. You get George or the stage manager. You're George! I'm going to play George! You could still be the stage manager. Uh, who else auditioned for it? I'm not sure. I know Chloe did. <laughs> Chloe's a worker bee. I got the stage manager! I played the stage manager! I got the lead! Who'd you get? I... got Emily. Congrats! Thanks. Dad, I got it! I got the stage manager! I start the play and I end the play! I'm in every scene and I get to smoke a pipe! Thank you! Me too! Thank you! Uh, I'm playing... the stage manager. What? I'm playing the stage manager. Dad, I'll call you back. Is a double cast? Uh, no, you're not the stage manager in the play. You're the stage manager of the play. Oh. Did I get a part? Yeah. Joe, the paper girl. Where are we going to go celebrate? I made plans with Aspen. You made plans with me. I know. I'm sorry. We said we'd go celebrate. Why would you make other plans? She was really insistent. Where are you guys going? She wants to go look at the billboards. The billboards. <laughs> These things are amazing. You think? I love them. You don't? It's hard to be too crazy about something that destroyed your entire town. Maybe they could do some kind of performance art with them. Oh, there's one. Boeing, 767. How can you tell? Bright asymmetric tip lights, green on one side, red on the other, and a flasher on the nose cone. Where did you learn all of this? There wasn't that much to do in Tabora. <laughs> it you could all stand on these things and welcome people. Is that what you're doing? Yup. Car coming? Are you seriously doing this? Hello! Stop! Welcome to Pin Cushion! Pin Cushion loves you! Uh, that was the firework. Uh, Firecracker Mundo, it's Pin Cushion's biggest day. Uh, we used to do this first big day a fall firework display up on the hill, but then we can't afford it. So Lisa Finch Fox chooses one really good firework imported from China and the whole town gets together to set it off. 
It's an Airbus 320. Of course, I have no way of telling if you're right. Well, Airbus fleet is spooky, underlit, like they're all trying to hide under the clouds. <laughs> no. Please, one more chance. I'm sorry, Burke. You only get to audition once. I got sick. I'm sorry. But I'd be great in it. You like your plays suspenseful. Our town has psychiatric suspense, like where the audience members in the actual audience stand up and ask questions to the people on stage, and the people on stage respond, and you're like, what is happening to reality? Oscar Wilder was a freak. I'm sure you'll find something scary in whatever we choose to do next. You want people to show up at the performance, right? Of course. If you give me a part, you'll have way more audience than you had for Dracula. You need a marketing guy, and I'm your guy. If you'll do marketing for our town, I'll definitely take that into account next time around. You only had 70 people in the audience at Dracula. That's 13.6% of a town that has nothing else to do. And what's your plan? Person to person, a poster awareness campaign, and social media all tied together with the greatest slogan in the world. The greatest slogan in the entire world. Yep. That sounds like an oversell. You won't know it until you hear it. Let's hear it. Give me a part and I'll tell you the slogan. No, you have to tell me the slogan first. I got a part! Congratulations, Bark! Uh, who are you gonna be? Assistant to the paper girl. <sighs> That's great, Bark. I don't have any lines, so I won't get the loudest applause, but I'll get the longest. <laughs> I, I waited for you outside of study hall, but somehow you slipped by me. Uh, yeah, I had to leave a little early. Can I drive you home? I don't mind the walk. <laughs> I brought you something. A tail light. <laughs> yeah, you know how you said yours was out and we were in Hemet, and I thought, hey, I bet Jessica didn't get that tail light yet. Thank you, Bark. You didn't have to do that. No, I didn't. So one question. Would you maybe want to go to dinner or a movie with me? Oh, Bark, that's so nice. But... I like someone else. Is it pheromones? No, it's more complicated than that. But it's not going to happen. If you change your mind, could we have a signal? It won't happen. Like a good one that would be like, we rub our heads together like horses nuzzling? What? No! But it would be sweet. You know why people like love stories? It's because in love stories, you can make someone fall in love with you. Uh, but in real life, that never, ever happens. But, but you don't even know if the someone you like is interested in you, right? No, but... It's a girl. Shoot. I practiced in everything. I asked out another girl. Oh, great. Thanks. And? I'm still deciding. Deciding what? If I want to go out with her. <laughs> what did she say when you asked her? <laughs> she said okay. Then you have to go out with her. No. Yes, Bark, that's the rule. If you ask a girl out and she says yes, then you're committed. But I don't even like her. Why'd you ask her out? I was practicing for you. Who do you ask out? Chloe. Chloe? Exactly. Oh, what were you thinking? It was not funny. My card. I was sure she'd say no. Well, she must like you. But I don't like her. I don't want to make her sad. You're not going to make her sad because you're going to go out with her. You can't make me. You're going to go out with her, and you're going to be nice. You're not going to be glum. You're not going to text. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go on a date and be a dick. I know you wouldn't. We don't have anything to talk about. Tell her you know she writes in a journal. How do you know? I have a system. And another thing, if you want to show off, she likes zoos, but not circuses. How do you know? And she feels guilty about it. Okay, I tell her about her journal, and then I tell her about zoos and circuses, and then we stare at each other for 75 minutes. Here's what you do. You go for a walk. A walk? Yeah. A walk is a really nice date because it takes the pressure off. 
it's okay to just be quiet and enjoy the hills. You know, the good thing about walking for a date is that it's okay to just be quiet and enjoy the hills. That's true. That's smart. This is a really good banana. Bananas are clones. <laughs> they are? Yeah, they're all genetically identical. Well, thanks anyway. You're welcome. Way to go on your part in the play. Thanks. You too. What did you list for special talent? Uh, I can vomit on cue, like a mother bird. What did you put? Cars. You seem like the kind of girl who keeps a journal. How'd you know that? I know some things, like, I bet you like zoos, but not circuses. Who told you that? You shouldn't feel bad about it. I, I don't think you're that hard to get to know. Uh, I'm not. Competent and mean. You're very well branded. Oh, that's so irritating. Sorry. There's people that do things and people who say thank you when it's done. And the people who say thank you think that's their whole job. And God forbid the people who are whatever, building the pyramids or whatever, get a little snarly once in a while. We're still the ones building the pyramids. I have some feedback for you. Are you open to hearing it? Feedback? Yeah. No, I don't want your feedback. It's good feedback though. No, I have no interest in your feedback. But it's so good. Forget it. Is it about my hair? No, what happened to it? It came out different than usual. I'm just gonna give you my feedback. You've gotta lose the cards. No. But people think it's weird. You're not allowed to talk to people about weird. But yours is so fixable. Mean and weird. Why did you even ask me out? Was it some kind of dare? No. Then why? I don't really think you're mean. It was a joke. Sometimes I'm funny on purpose. So do you accept my feedback? Stop talking. It would make a difference for you. It's not fixable and I don't want to talk about it. Why not? My family is private about medical things. I won't tell anyone. You say that now, but someday you're talking with someone and the conversation runs dry. That never happens to me. And suddenly, you can't tell anyone, but there's this thing about the girl with the cards. It's, it's medical? Yeah. I know what that's like. Yeah? Yeah. You're sick? Yeah, you're right, it's private. You remember that story about the guy hiking in Joshua Tree who fell off a cliff, but they were thinking that maybe the wife pushed him, but they couldn't prove it? Yeah. That's what's going to happen to you if you tell anyone. I won't. When I was a kid, I stuttered. I mean, just crazy. I couldn't get through a sentence. And we tried all these things, and the thing that worked best for me was I'd go like this. If I talked like this, it created a feedback loop, and for some reason that helped. Over time, I got so I didn't have to use my hands. Now I almost never stutter. Except, it's the craziest thing. I can't say my own name. Oh. Yeah. You can't say Chloe? No. Try it. No. Please? That's why I keep the cards. Well, we should totally hang out. You think? Yeah, you stay close to me, and when people ask your name, I'll say it for you. All right, you're my boyfriend. No, I'm not. <laughs> That's so cute. I don't think of you that way. I'll fix that. What time are you picking me up for Firecracker Mundo tomorrow? We're not going to Firecracker Mundo. Yes, we are, because we're a couple. We're not. Then why are you taking me to Firecracker Mundo? We're not going. You're mine now. I don't feel that way. Well, not right now, but it's red light, green light, Barcarino. You look, and I'm way off in the distance, barely even there. But then, 
Green light, you look away. Red light, I'm closer. Green light, you're doing your regular life. Red light, oh, I'm even closer. And it just keeps happening. Green light, red light, green light, red light. Until there I am, right inside your heart and you never even saw me move. What happens if the whole town isn't there? They will be there. I'll make sure of it. How? You worry about landing the ship. What's the matter? Hey, Bark. Hey, Chloe. Bark, what's wrong? Pretty out, huh? Yeah. You gonna have a picnic? Oh, we already did. Kind of. I can't get her to eat. Nice to see you two. Something's wrong with the boy. He can see us! No, you're paranoid. Test him! See if he flinches! I'll do it. Uh, how come everybody got so quiet? He can't see us. I think we're all just enjoying the view. Chloe, I'm not feeling that great. Would it be okay if I walked down with you two? Sure, we'll take you down. Where do you feel sick? Sort of all over. All right, uh, let's go. How many days until the ship launches? Ah! Bark. Tell me about your system. Did it work? Yes. I told you. How do you do it? I'm not ready to share it. Because it works mostly, but not completely. Yeah, as a matter of fact. But there's one girl that's screwing it up. Yeah? Aspen. How do you know that? Because I know things about Aspen. What do you know? Show me your system. You've heard about the seven types of girls, queen bees, all that stuff? No. It doesn't matter. There aren't seven. There are 67. This is the system in graph form. Where would Aspen be on the graph? Mm, here? Where no human life exists. What if I said I could explain that? I'd say explain that. You won't believe it. Try me. Aspen's an alien with, I'm not sure, but I think they're invisible bodies. Wait, you lost me an alien. When did she arrive here? To pincushion? Right around the time you left. Nobody else noticed anything weird about her? No, start over. What are you saying about Aspen? She's from another planet. This is Aspen who's dating Cole. Yes. If she were from another planet, then why would she date? I'm not sure, but I can hear them. On their home planet, they've miniaturized their whole population, and they're loading them on a ship to come here. No, they're not. Told you you wouldn't believe me. Well, if the only evidence is that you can hear them... What about your graph? I think my sample size is too small. You know that's not true. You honestly believe this. Their ship launches a week from Thursday, and if that happens, it's game over. Why don't you go talk to Miss Finch Fox? How was I able to know that your system had a flaw and that the flaw was Aspen? Why are you the only one that can hear these voices? I don't know. Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is the best. And the simplest explanation is that this is about you. Occam's razor? You're a scientist, so do an experiment. Test to see if she's an alien. She's not. Because you can't see it? What a great scientist. Sorry, oxygen. Sorry, gravity. Sorry, bacteria. What would the experiment be? Cookies. Peanut butter. Chocolate chip. Snickerdoodle. You made these? Yeah, you want one? Yeah. They're good. Get Aspen to eat one. Why? Because you can't. Because Aspen doesn't eat. Yes, she does. Have you seen it? Not really. She's almost here. See if you can get her to eat one bite of these. If she eats, will you see a doctor? Yes. If she doesn't, you'll admit I'm right? No. If she doesn't, it only proves that she doesn't want to eat. Hi, Aspen. Hey, you two. What's this fantastic thing you want to show me? It's these. Cookies. They're amazing. What kind? Peanut butter. Oh, I'm allergic to peanut butter. And I also have chocolate chip. Um, I just ate. Thanks. You don't even want just a bite? No, but thanks. 
And then there's these, snickerdoodles, our family special recipe. Uh, I'm just not hungry. Uh, thanks, though. Actually, do you have a minute? I need your help. Sure. I have an experiment to do for psychology. It's about motivation. Your natural motivation for eating a cookie would be hunger, and you're not hungry. But what if I offered you a dollar to take a bite? She knows. He knows, and he's trying to teach her. I wouldn't do it. Okay, what if I offered you two dollars? No. Would you eat one for five dollars? No. And how about for ten? No, I don't want a cookie. That's the point. A hundred dollars. Whose experiment is this? It's mine, and I'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars. I will. You'd offer me a hundred dollars to eat a cookie. I'd offer you a hundred dollars to take one bite. It's a bluff. Do you have the a hundred? I do. Well, duh, then. Hand me that cookie. Thank you. You're welcome. Bart, I know you can hear me. Smells great. It is. If you make me eat that cookie, Jessica will suffer. You made these yourself? Yep. The same thing that happened to Devin. Here it goes. Don't! <sighs> that hurt! Sorry. What's the matter? I changed my mind. You all but forced me to eat one. What's going on? Please, can I have one? No. Everybody on stage, now! Thank you, Chloe. First, an update on Devin. She hasn't regained consciousness. They have no idea what's going on. Let's keep her in our prayers. On a happier note, we have a treat today. Bark is joining the cast. Welcome. Thanks, Miss P. I wanted to say I was really sorry to hear about the Dairy Queen. Thank you, Bark. I was going to do this later, but as most of you know, Bernard and I had to close the Dairy Queen. As a result, we won't be able to afford to stay in pincushion. And Principal Mack informs me that she won't be replacing me. Our town is going to be our final production. What? Wait, what? No Just way. On. The point is, let's make this a fitting finale. Bark is going to be handling marketing for our town. Can you talk a little about that? We're going to divide up the town and we're going to hit them with flyers and emails and lots of talk. And I'm tying it all together with the slogan. The greatest slogan in the entire world, which is? Our town. You have to believe it to see it. Tell everyone where you were last month. Let's take our places for the top of Act 2. Tell them, or Jessica and your father pay. Wait, everybody, wait. One more thing. I have been away, as you may have noticed, and I think it's better if you know that I was at Rosemead which is a hospital for, I, I had some mental issues, so. Doe, if I sometimes say strange things, ignore me. So if I say things that don't make sense, don't pay any attention. I'm glad you told us. <laughs> me too. Thank you for sharing that with us, Bark. Put that away. Sorry. What's the rule about electronics? My dad keeps texting me. Is it a matter of life and death? He says we have to come see them. See what? The billboards. Overnight they changed, all of them. Where before there had been blank canvas, tattered white. Now every single billboard carried a design. A giant heart with initials below and space for initials above. That their billboard and maps of the track so has my initials on it. The billboard at mile marker 28. Mile marker three. <laughs> marker 57 has my initials on it. My initials. My initials. Every single person in the town found their initials on one of those billboards. Beneath a blurry pair, 
a hidden pair of initials that represented the person who loved them. It's like the whole town had a secret admirer. And a little bounce in their step. We tried to take pictures. It didn't work. They came out blank. But this is a town that knows marketing. We called the media. They came. The TV reporters. The print people. Look what happened to our billboards. Ahem. <clears throat> what exactly are you talking about? Somehow, the billboards were again tattered and white. No, oh, really, y'all, they all had these hearts. They really did. All the rest of the country saw was another hoax. The meanest town in the world, again, showing that it was mean. You might as well put a roadblock on that business loop. No one took exit 271 anymore. But the town had been so lonely for so long that no one really noticed. The truth is, we didn't mind. A secret admirer is exactly that. A secret. We were all alone, but we knew somebody loved us. You have something to do with the billboards. I'm on my way home. Where are you from? Why are you threatening me? Let's go someplace quiet. No, right here. If you want to talk, you'll need to go with me. The boy is afraid. We should introduce ourselves. He's tricking us. He needs to know. Bark, take a deep breath, relax, and don't be afraid. Hello. Hello. This is all of me. You know Aspen. My name is Aspen too. I am Crick. My name is Flix. We're pleased to meet you. What about those two? It's best if they don't wake. Our planet is dying. We've used up our most uh, precious resource, something you have in abundance. Crick? Do you see that rock? Think about the person that you love the most. Why? Do it, and keep your eye on the rock. Up! This really happened? Touch it. Think about her even harder. Whoa! That's how we'll land our ship. Love. For us, love is everything. It's air and water and food and energy. Every person on your planet generates it in enormous quantities. We're coming here to soak up some of the excess. You're coming here peacefully. Yes. Which is why you did whatever you did to Devin? It's temporary and necessary. I would never harm another living creature. Bark? Mom! I missed you so much. Where have you been? I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. Tell me what? I've been working with them. We've been using the love that your mother has for you to sustain us. They mean us no harm. Can I show him? Of course. Show me what? Follow me. Slow down. I was scared too, until I saw what I'm about to show you. I have missed you so, so much. I knew you didn't just leave. There. Where? Do you see it? Maybe. Get closer. Mark! Right there. Get back from there! Bark, stop! Whoa! What were you doing? I don't know. Were you going to jump? No. Yes, he was. You were this far from the edge. I don't even know how I got here. What are you doing here? I was trying to stop him. You walked him all the way up here? It was like he was in a trance. Why didn't you call somebody? My phone's out of juice. Let me see it. No. Show me your phone. No. Go away. Why are you mad at me? You're never gonna come near Bark again. That's his choice. 
No, it's not. You make my flesh crawl. Don't be mean. I am mean. You creep me out and I don't have to explain that. Are you going to keep him safe? Yes. Go away. What were you doing? What time is it? Uh, almost five. Seriously? I've been looking for you since three. What were you doing for two hours? It only seemed like five minutes to me. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was great you told everybody about your mental thing. Thanks. What is it exactly? There's no clear diagnosis. They tried medications until the symptoms stopped, but now they're back, but different. I'm hearing voices and I've started to see things. Like what things? Is that why you were standing at the edge of the cliff? Sort of. Do the voices tell you to hurt yourself? No, but they told me to tell everybody that, that I was mentally sick. Your voices told you to tell everybody you were hearing voices? <laughs> yeah. You're a good person, and you deserve me. What's that? What? Red light. Green light. I don't like you in that way. I followed your ass up the side of a mountain and kept you from jumping off a cliff, because that's what a girlfriend does. You're not my girlfriend. You've got to get over that. Which billboard are your initials on? Mile marker 48. Signage and love are not a good combo. My dad Seifert was so in love with my dad Jeff that he proposed to him in public at a Dodgers game. It was the seventh inning stretch and all of a sudden the Jumbotron flashes up. Jeff Runeo, will you marry me? And Jeff really liked Seifert. But something about being called Jeff Runeo in such a public setting told him this was not the guy. By then, the whole stadium was staring at them on the Jumbotron, and these Channel 7 reporters had run down to ask, was he going to say yes, and did he think the Dodgers would win? And Jeff knew perfectly well the Dodgers would lose, but he said yes to both questions. A year later, they adopted me, and three years after that, they, they divorced, which seems like a sad story, but I love what Seifert did. There's the kind of person who would propose on a Jumbotron, and the kind who if proposed to in that way, would already be able to see the divorce waiting there in the future. Uh, FYI, I'm the first kind of person, so when you propose to me... I don't think that's gonna happen. It doesn't have to be soon. It's not gonna occur. This is just free advice I'm giving you. I'm the second kind of person. I'll fix that. You know why people like love stories? Because in love stories, you can make people fall in love with you, but in real life, you never can. Who are you quoting? Nobody. Yes, you are. You didn't think of that. Why? Because I'm not smart enough? No, because you don't believe it. Are you hearing anything that isn't there? No. Hang with me tonight. I bet we can keep the scary voices away. And you know what tonight is. Welcome to Firecrackamundo! You doing okay? Yeah. No voices? No. Hey, Jessica. Happy Firecrackamundo! Happy Firecrackamundo. It's empty. I know, it's like they forgot to publicize it. <laughs> Have you seen Aspen? Not since school. <sighs> you two are cute together. We're not together. Yeah, we are. Not the way she means. Hello, Bart. Hey, Dad. I recommend the corn dogs. I already had one. Hello, Bart's friend. Uh, I'm the girlfriend. Jessica. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so bad with names. Uh, he's only mentioned you about a thousand times. Your name is... Uh, my name is... I, I usually carry these cards, but I left them at home. What's my name again? She's not my girlfriend. I just spent all afternoon being great to you. 
You have 10 seconds to tell everyone here that I'm your girlfriend. You're my friend. Say it. That girl, and you say my name, is my girlfriend. Going. You're not my girlfriend. Going, going. I don't like you in that way. Gone. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a woman who needs no introduction, the owner of Travel Dot Billiards, the guidance counselor of Pink Cushion High, and our mayor, Lisa Finchbox. Thank you, everyone, and welcome to the 14th annual Fire Crackamundo. When I had the idea for Fire Crackamundo, a lot of people said to me, Lisa Finchbox, you have lost your ever-loving mind. You might have gone to Dartmouth and graduated with a 3.8. Your honors thesis might have been nominated for the Chalmers Award, but this is really a bridge too far. But I guess we showed them. We don't need a noisy 15 minute firework display. There is beauty in one very carefully selected firework. Our attendance is a little down this year, but not our spirit. And I'm being signaled that we are ready for the firework. Aspen. Hi there. Oh no. What's the matter? Did you think we'd gone away? Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes to the east and let the countdown begin. 30, 29, 28. Watch Jessica as she lies down and never wakes up. Get away from her! What's wrong? Get over there! What are you doing? What's going on? He picked up the firework. What's he doing? Mark, that's dangerous! Put down that firework! Mark, it's gonna go off! Don't do this! Ah! I'm hit! Did it go off? No, oh, it's still in the air. Pull it out! It's stuck! It's floating in the air. Pull it out! Is it still wet? Ah! <laughs> Is it fatal? <laughs> yes, but not to us. You have damaged me, but you have angered my sister. Dark Melon, look around you. Right now is the best moment for the rest of your life. Run if you want. Tell the people you love to run. You can't hide from us. The world's about to get dark. Dark. Dark! Four hundred and sixty-three of the four hundred and seventy-four people who attended Firecrack Mundo that year would later claim to be speaking to Bark when the incident with the firecracker happened. He was there with that girl. We were talking about sports. Bark and I go way back. But no two accounts matched up exactly. He picked up the firework, the fuse was already lit, and he came charging at us. I had to dive out of the way. I threw myself in front of a child! The fireworks singed my eyebrows! To me, it seemed like he was aiming at that girl, Aspen. For sure. He pointed it at Aspen, but he missed. He fired it, and then the strangest thing, it stopped in midair, hovered in the air near Aspen. Uh, turned around. I turned around just in time. And it exploded, but muffled somehow, like it exploded inside of something. You could hear the bang, and you saw some sparks, but that girl Aspen just stood there like she was frozen. You had no indication at all that he was dangerous. He's not dangerous. He shot that firework right at Aspen. He was 10 feet away. He wouldn't have missed. Is that a joke? Barks had two manic episodes. But the episodes were so sweet. He thought he was in a game and the whole world was rooting for him to win it. He needs to go back to Rosemead. Please don't make that your recommendation. How can I not? He's scared to leave the house. Doesn't that tell you he needs professional help? Rosemead didn't do him any good. We can't just pretend this didn't happen. He's already been through so much, Lisa. I'm sorry to hear about that, Lincoln. 
Thank you. I liked when. I liked Moses. So did I. I, I just felt so stupid, you know? He and Olivia were having that affair right under my nose. I looked through pictures of last year. She's practically in every one. Well, not our best year. No. You look good, though. Did you lose weight? 15 pounds. Nice. Mostly diet and exercise? Mostly sadness. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. If you ever need to talk things through, you know where I live. These next few weeks are pretty crazy, but then I'll make a point of it. Let me keep Bark at home. I'll take off work for as long as I need to. He won't be a danger to anybody. That's not the point. He, ha he needs help. He has a history of paranoia. Not paranoia. He thought the world was on his side. Rooting for him? That's technically paranoia. No. Paranoia is where you think people are talking bad about you. No, it's actually that you think they're talking about you, period. Well, of course people are talking about you. Bark and I talk about you all the time. Does that make you paranoid? Slow down. If you think people are talking about you, maybe that makes you paranoid. But if you think they're not, that makes you stupid. Let's not get personal, Lincoln. Don't make him go to Rosemead. There's no option. The facilities in this town left, and that is, I'm sorry to say, your fault. It was your decision to put in that speed trap that killed this town. It wasn't my decision. It was my idea. It was a bad idea. Don't take that out on Bark. He is a 16-year-old boy. I would never do that. I'm sorry. Ever. I know, and I love that about you. This isn't like the other times. He's himself, except for this one thing. Let him come home with me, and the moment he gets worse, I'll take him straight to Rosemead. People say, Lisa Finch Fox, you have two master's degrees. Why aren't you the principal? And I tell them, it's because I'm a superb guidance counselor. And Lincoln, that boy needs doctors. Give me one week. Let me see if this clears up. It won't. Please. One week, and at the end of the week, She's going to pay a visit to assess you, and if you don't seem right to her, she's going to recommend hospitalization. So to start with, we're going to need to open the blinds. So no! There's nothing out there I can't protect you from. I box in community college and seminary. You got kicked out of both, and you went 0 and 11. I did damage. Ribs, chins. I was a bad boxer, but a great hitter. There's no aliens. I saw them. Out of all, all the places in the world, they chose to come to Pincushion, California. Nowhere, and the whole town has a reputation for lying. And the only person who can see them happens to be a boy with a history of delusions. That's why they chose me. Chose you for what? I don't know. Are you noticing anything else that's different? No. You don't think you're in a game? No. Nothing else? It seems like it came from the plot of a movie? No. We have one week. I want you to lie to me. Bark, do you think Aspen is an alien? Lie to me. No. Try that again. No. Come on, you want to be in a play, I need some method here. I don't think there are aliens. 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 Better. I don't think there are aliens. Bark. But I, but I think we have a chance. I wounded one of them. Fix us! Sacrifice yourself! No! You will doom us all! Hair is right. Our life is leaking from your wound. I know the one we need. Get behind the bushes. She's not answering my calls. She probably just needs some time alone. She's coming. Here's the note. Up. To Maybelline? Uh, her, her friend's the one they call Claire de Lune guy. What's up? Look at this note I just got. Who gave it to you? 
nobody. It was flying through the air, and I snagged it. But it has your name on it. I know. Look. From your secret admirer. <gasps> secret admirers never turn out to be who you want. Oh, please, 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 please. Who do you want it to be? Jessica. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, please. Open it. Maybelline. I don't have the courage to say it face to face. I think I love you. Heart Jessica. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Wait, what's that on the back? Oh, just kidding. You're kind of boring. Oh, that's funny. Ha 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 ha. No, it's not. I bet everyone's going to think it's funny. Maybelline. I like the retro cap. Jessica's not just out of your league. She's out of your sport. Not that you play sports. Why are you always the one getting dumped? Not always. Martha doesn't count. She doesn't? No. Am I too quiet? That's part of it. What's wrong with you? A lot of things. Let's make a list. We'll need to explain this. It's happened again. But don't worry, I am a government official. We'll figure it out. You're still leaking. One of us will need to die. They're going to figure it out. Until they do, let's keep Maybelline and her family in our prayers. And the show must go on. One of you is going to have to step up. Chloe? Y yes? You know which lines Maybelline was handling in the cemetery scene? I, I do. Can you go through the scene with Aspen and mark her script for her? Sure. Aspen, can you do this? Of course. Good. Next order of business. Who here has sold their allotment of tickets? Nobody? Not one person? Oh, well, we lost our marketing guy. Well, then figure out how to sell them yourselves. There's a basketball game that night. I don't care that there's a basketball game that night. Get out there and sell those tickets. Did you account for the basketball game? I accounted for everything. It's time. Up! Of all the strange things that happened in Pincushion that fall, the strangest and most secret were the envelopes. What's this? It was fluttering in the breeze. It landed in my locker. It was stuck to the bottom of my shoe. It had my name on it, even though it was in a puddle. The person who loves you is... The person who loves you is... Do not open. Do not open until instructed. I'm going to open it. Me too. I tried to steam it open. Tried to tear mine. Do not open until instructed to do so at the play. Please visit me if you can. I want to talk to you about something important. <laughs> hey! Hey, Beck! What's funny? I've never had a girl crawl in my window before. I've never crawled in a boy's window before. My dad would have let you in. This is better. We could get caught. What's your important thing you need to talk about? It doesn't always go over well. well. You won't know till you try. I can't believe I missed your Firecracker Mundo performance. Yeah. Have they figured out what's going on with you? No, they're working on it. I went to a psychiatrist for a while. For what? Depression. You know what we need? What? We should have a signal. Like, maybe sometimes we should just touch our foreheads together. What are you doing? And then you put your forehead down. No. It would, but it would be sweet, like nuzzling horses. No. But just try it. No chance in hell. Why? 
Because I will not, absolutely not, nuzzle you like a horse. But just try it. T no. Let's try to pretend we're not the strange couple. You should probably go home. I, I didn't mean strange strange. See you later. I, I was mostly talking about me. The word hit me wrong. My mom left because I was strange. No, she didn't. Yeah, she left a note. She left it for Dad, but I got home first. Lincoln, I love you so much, but Bark is too strange. Oh. Yeah. I thought she left for another man. That's what Dad told people. He got home and he read the note and he just tore it up. And then he told me to get in his truck and he drove me to Kiebert's Auto and bought me my first car. The thing about the signal, when you're a couple, which we are, you don't need signals for stuff like that. Signals are, are for emergencies, like if you have an emergency that I can help with. Any emergency. I don't care if your shoes need tying or it's a hostage situation. That's when you have a signal. So what's the signal going to be? Uh, let's do this. <clears throat> One more time? This. You just got a lot safer. Tell me your important thing. Aspen isn't what she seems like. She's an alien who's trying to take over the Earth. What is it really? That's it. The alien has five bodies you can't see. That's not what you wanted to tell me. Yeah, it is. That's the important thing you wanted to tell me? Why are you mad? You have no idea what it's like to be rejected by somebody you're too good for. You have no idea what it's like to all of a sudden get demoted. Don't get all melodramatic. I'm becoming that friend you only invite to places you're already going. No, you're not. It's not like I asked if I could come to your anniversary dinner. All I said was, let's all have lunch. Lunch is kind of a loaded thing for Aspen. How is lunch loaded? Okay, you can't tell anybody. I won't. She doesn't eat in front of other people. Why not? Her organs are in the wrong places. It makes her self-conscious about eating. What do you mean, in the wrong places? Her heart and her spleen got swapped in the womb. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. She'd be famous. That's why you can't tell anybody. Her heartbeat is right here. You've never seen her eat? No. Ever? Well, don't say it like that. I'm gonna give her this. <laughs> Is that a wedding ring? It's a commitment ring. Is it real? Yeah, it's real. Where'd you get the money? I used my Los Angeles money. You've been saving that for four years! But this is only gonna happen once. Can you get your money back? No, I know this is the right thing to do. It's not. Yes, it is. I'm gonna take her up to the ridge and tell her I love her and then give it to her. There you are. <laughs> there you are. I've been missing you. Aspen, I haven't given you a hug since that Firecrackamundo disaster. That must have been terrifying. It was. Jessica hugs Aspen, one hand around her shoulder, one hand on her side, where the heart is. She's feeling the heart! On purpose? Yes, on purpose! As long as I have you here, can I run another experiment? I have an errand to run. All you have to do is stand there. It's called, um... Motion-induced vertigo in the post-adolescent female. Jessica sprints a circle around Aspen. The bodies behind Aspen easily sidestep her. She runs behind Aspen again. This time, she does a quick zigzag. The bodies move out of the way. She knows! Stop it! What are you doing? It was an experiment. No, it wasn't. I was goofing around. I think you and I might need to spend a little less time together. <laughs> How would that even be possible? Crick is right. She knows. She'll be next. Hi. I'm calling with news. What news? 
I ran an experiment. I ran back and forth behind Aspen. There are no extra bodies behind her. When did you do that? Just a few minutes ago. Where is she now? I don't know. Don't let her near you. I was just with her. Alone? No, Cole was with us. You have to stay away from her. The point is, there are no extra bodies. Yes, there are. Anyway, everyone here at school misses you, and we're waiting for you to get better. Jessica, I need to talk to you. Hi, again. Who's that? Is that Aspen? It is, as a matter of fact. Bye. No, Jessica, please call back if you get this. Bark? Yeah? You've got to see this. That movie E.T. is on every channel, except Channel 6 is playing My Favorite Martian. What's the matter? Jessica's in danger. From the aliens? Yes. She'll be all right. I need to help her, but I'm too chicken. It's okay. They're gonna hurt her. Come watch TV with me. I'm so scared. Come on, we can catch the end of that bicycle chase. I want to talk about what just happened between us. What just happened? You were mean to me. You had some private jokes, so it was funny to you to run circles around me. I hadn't thought of it that way. Are you okay? I'm a little sick. I'm not sure why you don't like me. I'm not sure either. You could make it up to me. How? Thank you for asking how, but I can probably do it myself. It's nice to know that you are willing, if that makes any sense. It does. <laughs> I feel like we actually have a lot in common. If it weren't for our circumstances, we'd be friends. What circumstances? You worry that you're losing Cole to me. No, I don't. Are you sure? I'm glad that he's found someone that makes him so happy. Thank you. You know, I probably could use your help, but it's something that I'm doing for Cole. I can help. I set up this whole surprise for him up in the hills, but some of it fell over and it's a mess. What's the surprise? It's easier if I show you. Let's do it. Stop! You're not supposed to be out. Stay away from her. Who are you talking to? Does your dad know you're here? Don't go anywhere with her. I hurt you. Not badly enough. Bark, you've got to go home. No! We should call his dad. Did she invite you somewhere? Let's go. She did. Somewhere quiet, I bet. Maybe up in the hills. Let's call the police. Wait. <laughs> I want him near me. Don't go with her. Please, do not go wherever she is pretending to take you. If I don't go with her, can I walk you home? Yes. Aspen? I'll help you tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. I'm sorry. I'm going to go with Mark. There you are. Hi, Mr. Mellon. You're not supposed to be out. That's not really my dad. We need to get you to the doctor. Please don't leave me with it. It, Jessica, has he seen paranoid? A little, yeah. They're going to hurt me. Who's they? Your being here upsets him. Oh, uh, we'll go. I'd like Aspen to stay. Okay. Please don't go. I'm sorry, Bark. She's evil. Not evil. Your species and mine have conflicting needs, and we're much smarter than you. I'm not scared of you. That's a mistake. Poor little crazy boy. Is that the best you've got? How brave, standing up to your own imagination. Not my imagination. Why don't you go to any birthday parties? I don't like parties. Do you get invited? Why would people invite me if they know I don't like parties? Have you told them that parties tonight? Keep it quiet. Here comes Bark. You think it's charming how strange you are, but no one tells you their secret. Chloe did. You're a condiment friend. No one jumps up and down when you arrive. No one plans little surprises for you. If you did have friends, you could warn them. Find an ally to help you spread the news. They're about to quietly crush your planet. 
person by person, by town, by state, by country, by continent. Soon every person in pink cushion will be catonic. So sad the brain functions all but stops. Did you hear that? Light years away, our ship just launched. <gasps> The wound is still here. One of us must die. Yes, one of us must die, but not me. You take the wound. Ugh, you need me to land the ship. You take it. Ugh, without me, we lose the boy. You take the wound. Ugh, without me, you can do nothing. Ugh, I'm crucial. I give Aspen language and culture and movement. Without me, she's not human. Ugh. Ugh. I'm the only male. It must be you. No. Yes. Uh, there's another male. No, there's not. There is. They found one. He's coming on the ship. You lie. You need my English. I speak gorgeous English. I control her movement. I do movement. Your bodies move like puppets. There's no one they haven't fooled. Controlling the body took years to learn. Her face alone took six months. I'll take the right side. You take the left. Done. I'll move the face. I'm sorry, Aspen, too. We choose you. Ugh. You will fail. You've doomed every inhabitant ugh, on our planet because you loved yourselves. Ugh. Mark? Hey. I need help. Hey, somebody call an ambulance. What was that, Mark? I can't hear you, bud. Help me. I'm teasing. He knows. He doesn't know. He's testing us. M mouth, get it closed. I'm trying. Close it. Close it. The mouth is difficult. D distract the boy. Look at that satellite. Where? Close it. The mouth is closed. No, it's not. Where's the satellite? Right there. You mean the moon? Yes. Teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> You're funny tonight. So, there's something I've been wanting to say. He knows! I know we haven't been together that long, but when you think about the future, I want you to think about this. An ornament. Do you like it? It's so... round. Put it on. Is there a fastener? It's so rain silly. Teasing! I'm teasing! I'm teasing! Well, put it on. On what? There are 20 options. I want to hold it in my hand and glare at it. I want to see it on you. It's a test! Kirk is right. Uh, it, it goes on the non-dominant hand. Which is non-dominant? I'm going to put it on the digit of my left finger. Which finger? I'm not sure. Put it on the wrong finger and our planet is doomed. Is something wrong? No. What are you waiting for? Choose. Ugh. What did you do? It didn't fit. You didn't even try it on. I assessed it virtually. You just threw the ring off the cliff. Yes. Why didn't you just give it back to me? It was small. It was $2,300. Why did you throw it away? Don't be annoyed. Seriously, why would you do that? Why, in your opinion, would I have done that? 
I, I guess, I guess you're saying that the ring is meaningless. Yes, that has deep intelligence. The ring is, it's just a symbol. And if you take away the symbol, what we have between us is still there. That's right. The ring was missing the point. Yes. I'm sorry I yelled. I absolve you. But I still wished you hadn't done that. I want to take our relations to the next platform. You do? Yes. Now? No. After the play, I want to make a home run with you. It was just a rock. Yes. I'm really glad you showed me that. You're welcome. Mouth! I just think it's weird. It's a coincidence. But it's a weird coincidence. He was scared of Aspen, and then I left them alone, and now he's unconscious. How could she have had anything to do with that? Where was Aspen the night Devin went into her coma? Oh, come on. And what about Maybelline? It's Aspen you should be worried about. Why? I think she might have had a stroke. Really? She's not herself. She's clumsy all of a sudden, and her English, well, she used to speak like a native. She is a native. No, she's just fluent. Where's she from? New Guinea. New Guinea? Yeah. Why didn't I know that? Because you've never shown any interest in her. Claire the Loon Guy. What? What do you think of Aspen? Um, vaguely negative. Why? Well, she doesn't use any verbal hedges. Like, she never says, I think, or in my opinion. You're learning to teach English as a second language. Yeah. So how does that work? Like, if you have a kid from Mexico and a kid from China in the same class? Well, that's the whole training. You teach in English, but you know the things that kids who speak different languages get wrong. Like, Asian languages don't have gender pronouns, so someone from Korea could mix up he and she. Uh, could you flip it? Tell where someone's from by the mistakes she makes? Sometimes. So if you ran into Aspen and started talking about the weather... What about the weather? <laughs> uh, um, I just think it's interesting, you know? I like rain, Jessica likes sun. Oh, what's your favorite kind of weather? I like sleet. <laughs> sleet! <laughs> yeah, why is that? I enjoy weather on the horizontal axis. It was nice crashing into you. <laughs> uh I have no idea what her native language is. It's like Mandarin mixed with math. I just, does she do drugs? I don't think so. She didn't used to make these mistakes. Really? No. She was flawless until about a week ago. That's drugs. No. I think it was that firework. But the firework didn't hit her. I know. Dear Lord. I'm very sorry for the lapse in communication. Two months ago, if you'd asked me my biggest problem, I would have said the cost of gas is eating into my driving profits. I look back now and I think, oh damn, a little trouble when I filled up the tank, that was happiness. I need your help. I'm here. Jesus, Chloe! Sorry. There's no visitors allowed. That's why I came in the window. He looks terrible. I know. Can I stay with him for a little? 15 minutes? I'll be in the hall. I heard what you said when Cooper found you. Nobody will come to my funeral. I know what it's like to be that wrong. When I went to a shrink, it wasn't all that talk about your mother crap. It was cognitive therapy. People who are depressed, they get these ways of thinking that are wrong. And if you can talk back to those thoughts, then you can fight the sadness. Like, one of them is called all-or-nothing thinking. Really, nobody will come to your funeral? Or you focus on the negatives and ignore the positives. Like having a girlfriend who cares about you. Or you think people are talking about you. 
the thing is, people do talk about you. I've heard them. What they say is, there goes Mark. <laughs> his mother left him. But look at how he holds his head up. He can still be goofy. That bark melon is really, really brainy. <laughs> Mr. Mellon, I, I fixed him. Why am I in the hospital? We're trying to figure that out. Hey. Hey. Whoa, buddy, not so fast. Get me out of here. We will, but probably not quite yet. How long? I don't know. Not long, I bet. I I've got to go fix Devin and Maybelline. I, get I bet you get some visitors. <laughs> I came to play for you. Claire DeLune. Why do you even ask? One by one, the students of Pincushion, California visited Bark in room 173 at Presbyterian Hospital. They brought cookies. Thank you. And jokes. Nauk, nauk. <laughs> Who's there? Canoe. Canoe who? They asked advice. Can you help me with my car? When I try to start it, it sort of goes... They kept him up to date. The place sold out. They canceled the basketball game so everyone could come. They checkered and chessed. King me. They brought news. You can play and apply. How is that possible? We're just going to do it if you can get out of here in time. Mostly, they just brought themselves. And soup. Thanks. It's chicken noodle. It's Campbell's. My mom adds cinnamon and she thinks that makes it homemade. What if I told you that I believed you that Aspen was an alien? I've been telling you that. What do you know about it? A lot. You know how a hybrid car works? Yeah, it turns the energy from deceleration into electricity. That's what she does. She takes a high emotional state and converts it into sadness, and that's what fuels her. She feeds on heartbreak. Yeah, she wants people to be in love because they have so far to fall. What brought her to Pincushion? I don't know. Maybe it's all the empty houses. Or just the one house. Pincushion is a tiny town with a big auditorium. Our town? Yeah, the whole town's going to be in one place. We have to stop the performance. That won't be hard. I'm the lead. You're the lead. I know. I'm sorry, but I'm really sick. Is this a joke? I'm so sorry. <coughs> Open in three hours. I don't know what to do, but I can't perform. You're not quitting. You're fired. Everyone, welcome to live theater. Here's what's going to happen. There's one person, one single person who can solve this problem. Chloe, can you come out here, please? Chloe has been at every rehearsal. She knows all the blocking. She hasn't memorized the lines, but that's all right. She's going to play the role script in hand. What do you say, Chloe? Can you be our hero? <clears throat> Chloe, can you do this? <clears throat> <coughs> I'm not sure if we came over to eat. Can you keep going? For us? No. Sorry. Well then, I'm sorry to say, the Pincushion High Theater legacy, everything that this department has accomplished in 27 years, ends with a whimper. Miss Pocopiak. Yes? I could step onto the role. It's too late, Aspen. It's too close to the performance. I portrayed Emily at my old high school and the high school before that. Honestly? I could do it in my nap. I know all of the blockage. Are you serious? I will do it stupendously. Goodbye, Mark. <laughs> Goodbye, Grover's Corners. Mama and Papa, goodbye to Clock's Tick 
and mama sunflowers and food and coffee and new iron dresses and hot baths and sleeping and waking up oh earth you are too wonderful for anybody to realize you do any human beings ever realize life while they live it every every minute no the saints and poets maybe they do some turn up those house lights please turn them up N no the saints and poets maybe they do some okay everybody listen up what I'm going to say is going to sound crazy, but it's actually true. Aspen isn't really a girl. She's an evil alien creature, and there's five of the horrible creatures with her right now, even though you can't see them. So please proceed in an orderly manner out of the theater, and I'll explain more when we all get outside. Is this part of the play? No, this is really happening. Get off the stage right now. No! Keep doing the play. Sometimes these things happen in live theater. We'll resume in just a bit. Mark, you're ruining this for everybody. No, I'm saving the world. Lincoln, are you out there? I'm here. Dad, tell them to believe me. Slow down, Mark. No, tell them I'm better. Do I sound like I'm crazy? Yeah, buddy, you do. It's okay. Let's go home. No, punch Aspen. Do I need to call security? No, we're okay. We're not okay. We've got to get out now in case they lock the doors. There's theater doors. They won't lock from the outside. But you should listen to Bark. I suppose you can see them too? No, but I have evidence. Jessica, why the taxonomy of human behavior? Something everyone else just understands. Do you have some little chip missing? Is that why you're always just the best friend? Whoa! Jessica, are you okay? I'm not as smart as I thought. Yes, you are. She's been attacked. Can we have some strong men up here, please? That's not necessary. Of course it is. I believe him too. You are not serious. I am. Sad little girl. Why does a bark want to be your boyfriend? Why are you always saying you're just a couple? What's your name again? Tell us. Attention, it's time for the surprise you've been expecting. What surprise? Open your envelopes. Go ahead. Learn who your secret admirer is. The person who loves you, each of you, is... Nobody. 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 She's doing this to you. Who is? You lost, Bark. There's not a soul here who can help you, because there's not a soul who believes in you! Dad? Yeah? You have to punch Aspen. No! Please. I'm not gonna hurt a girl! Right here. It's where her heart is. No! Why is the door locked? Are you sure it's locked? As they got locked from the outside. Dad. Aspen, I'm sorry. You did it! Look! There's other bodies! I see them too. What on earth? What's happening? Are you okay? Cole. What? I I'm breaking up with you. No! Yes. No, why? It's those teeth. No, please! They're so ugly! I can fix them! It's too late. Everyone sees how ugly they are. It embarrasses me. Please don't! Can we just please try one more time? You're not worth anything. No one here is worth anything. And no one here is true love. This poor little town that everyone American despises, the meanest town in the world. We chose Pink Cushion because no one will care when you're gone! Chloe. What? Red light. Green light. Again? Louder! I love you! Yeah. I have such 
such a crush on you! You do? Everyone, listen up! Krupper, Devin loves you! Devin, tell him that! I love you! Also, Josie has a crush on you! Be nice to her! Josie? You're cute! Laura likes you too! Hey, Laura! Laura, wave to Kevin! Miss Corner, your favorite checkout guy likes you! Omar, wink at Lena! Caitlin has a crush on Michael! Reese likes Sadie! Wilson, tell Alicia you love her! Kim, wave to Pamela! Jaden has a crush on Kirsten! And Leslie loves Benjamin! Cole, help me, please. I love you! No, 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 no! Cole, she wasn't good for you! I don't want someone good for me. She was an evil alien being! I don't care! Watch out! Bark! Winifred? Win? Mom! Wait! Are you sure it's really her? I'm sure. They took me. One minute I was getting ready for work, the next I was attached to them. They used the pain that I felt from being away from you two to feel themselves. You won't believe what's been happening. <laughs> I don't have to believe it. I saw it. What is it? What's mm -hmm. happened? Everybody down! I don't believe it. You're not gonna believe this. What? The owl the field, something just crashed. It's huge. It's as big as a Walmart. What is it? It's a spaceship. Welcome to Pincushion, California, a boom town, population 1500. Billboards in both directions. See the world famous spaceship. Population 7000. Actual alien spaceship, 20 miles! Here comes Cocos Flowers, Portillo's Bakery, Soup Plantation. 15,000! Dairy Queen, Home Depot, Bark Melon Toyota. 40,000! Paul Richards Cosmetic Dentistry, Xerox IBM, Bark Melon Chevrolet. Population 97,000 and climbing fast! Raython, Monsanto, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Welcome to Pink Cushion, California, home of Bark Melon. And that's the end of our story. A nice happy ending, unless you count every single inhabitant of that other planet. But actually, it's not quite the end. There was also what happened two days ago. A 26-year-old graduate student in psychiatry was driving home from UCLA. She was taking the long way, bypassing the interstate for the old Jackrabbit Highway. She was exhausted from her exams, but eager to see her family, eager to see her boyfriend. She was so tired she almost missed seeing the strangest thing. Out in the middle of nowhere, a straight light. A red light. Green light. The billboard at mile 246. Going. Mile 245. Going. Mile 243, going big. Will you marry me?